Hello everyone. In this video tutorial series, we are going to give the stanks ability to spawn and also give them health, so they can destroy. So we can destroy, and also they are going to respawn. So we are not wasting time. Let's start this video. Okay guys, let's spawn some enemies. We need to create a first enemies. Uh, sorry, spawn points where need to we need to tell where to spawn. So we need spawn points. Now first thing I will tell you that drag and drop this enemy tag to the project window to get a prepare. So because we're going to instantiate this object into the scene, so instantiate function does not take any game or it's going to take prefab. So we need to convert this enemy tag into the prefab. So I'm just drag and drop this enemy tag here. I already did. Then just click right click here, create empty game object name spawn manager. Just reset the transform, create a new empty game object, a child object, and just click spawn point and drag anywhere you want on this map. I'm going to here, duplicate here, and drag and drop one here spawn points then go spawn point I'm going to add a new, new create a new script name anything one I'm going to name spawner and I already created so I will tell you what in this script going to be okay then open a script first add the line public create an array of the spawn point the array going to be a it's actually like a variable but it's going to store multiple values of the same kind okay so I'm create an array of the transform just add the two square brackets after the transform and it's going to become automatically array so array always start with the so array always start with a zero if you look its size is zero now it does not have any so drag and drop all the spawn point to here its size become one then drag and drop one more then one more it's going to increase the size and just one more now look, we are going to store four spawn points. And if you check element zero, element one, element two, element three, so spawn point start with zero. And after you're done with this, just here back to the create two variables. First one going to be the max enemy. So this variable check present how many max enemy can present in this map. And second one is how many enemies are actually present. So it's starting at the start of the game. There officially zero they are present current is two and max will be two then we're going to get a, a check going to check uh, we're going to check some intervals for spawning spawning them so we need some intervals okay and with these two variables we're going to check so it's going to time interval and this first one is going to public and next one we're going to be next time spawn okay then create a new game object public that is going to be enemy okay this game object then in okay the first thing we start with this in so just max and zero and time to zero and drag and drop every enemy tank into this after you're done with this in update function create a condition by checking the case current enemy is going to less than the enemy and give one more and give the end here then check time dot time going to be greater than next time spawn then we need to spawn them we, then we're going to set our time dot time by giving a new value then we're going to create a random number creating a num and number because we need to spawn them because array to access the array we need to give some is index number okay we need to give index number so i'm going to want to spawn this enemy randomly all through the map so i'm going to access a and uh, random number so a random index number so i'm going to get an int i that is going to equal to the a random number zero to four now actually that's not going to take four number it's only takes zero to three but as i write four and our maximum is zero one two three so number going to be one of these three and it's going to store the i into this this is a local and temporary variable and going to destroy after this part is going to run okay then we're going to instantiate this game object 
So first we are asking what game object we need to tell it. So we go enemy, where to spawn it. It's going to spawn point and oh, yeah. there. Then we're going to spawn point this at the position. It's taking a trans transform. So we spawn point gives index value. Our random number is going to be a this means random spawn point. So just dot position. So it's going to take spawn value. Then continuum dot nnt for no rotation. We just don't want to give any rotation to this tanks. And then we're going to increase the current enemy by plus one because we as chance to one enemy now. Then you're going to write re re and this code because the abate function and going to run this code every perfume till the condition goes to true. Then after this, if you write this whole code, save the your code and back to the Unity. And if you're going to check everything in the place and just play this game. Okay, I forget to delete this. Okay, now wait for. Okay, wait, wait. I forget to give the time interval, so I'm going to give time to zero point five. Less the number, less the time. So more time will take to spawn. It's going to spawn one enemy, two, two enemies. So it's going to spawn two enemies on the two different locations. And if I play again, point the tank in, in different different locations. It's mean random. Okay. So now the one thing that you notice that tank is not following us. The reason why, as you convert this tank into the prefab, is automatically remove this transform. In the prefab, it does not in the green world, so it does not know our tank green. Our does not need know our player. So we need to, as we go going to go in the game world, so he we need to tell them that he that is again our mind green. So for this, I am going to just double click tank green, go to the graphics, and then it has an scripts. So I'm going to open up the MD scripts. Come on. Okay, sir. Then after opening this MD script, I'm. If you notice that I have a AI pad, so what I'm going to do? Then if you look here, AI designated setter pad here. We need to give him target. So we need to first need to access this script. Then we need to give this target. And so I'm going to take two variables. The first one we going to be public. Um, AI designator setter. I name it designator setter. Done, and then I kind of transform layer. Then start function because we need to assign this thing into the big first frame. The first first frame of this. I mean first frame of this game. So till so layer. Is equal to the game object dot find object with tag. We need to find this game object with tag, and we need to find the player. And what I'm player. Make sure that you write the correct tag name. And our player, and our cause the player is that. Okay. Then dot get component. As we need to find the transform. Transform just get to brackets then. Then next time we go to time destination setter dot target and it's going to be equal to the player. Okay, then after adding this, this is going to work. And go open the script again. So open the Unity, and if you can see if it's going to work. And if you do, if enemy tank clone. Oh, sorry. I forgot to do one thing that assign the. AI destination to the MD scripts. So just drag and drop this enemy tag to here, and then now it's going to work. And now look, spawn the enemies, and both are coming towards us and shooting us. Now let's give enemies health because they are immortal now. They are immortal currently. So first thing we're going to do. Go enemy tank and just add graphics and make sure graphics tag also have enemy so there's a work here go everything then we go check get enemy health new script get the first stuff health and just create new script and create an ad okay then open up the script in Visual Studio. Everything expected of start function so update function create a variable public 
int and this is going to be a health and it's going to equal to 100 you can give any value you want then create a new function public Mm. public wide this, going, this function will be public so we can access outside from the script anywhere so I'm going to give it damage we are calling this function from another script that gives some damage to our tank so just give a parameter amount that going to be digital then just be simply we're going to health subtracted by amount and then and in update function we're going to check every time if health is less than or equal to zero simply we need to destroy this or die do some um, like to create animation destroy this simply you can add any animation if you want and just sorry. After you've done this, open up the project as script that is going to be responsible for the shooting bullets in from player. Then here type enemy health and give enemy health. Then we need to find this enemy health. And we need to access this enemy. First we need to find this enemy health, then we will give the damage. Enemy health is going to be equal to the Okay, I'm going to first I'm going to change the spelling then now enemy health is going to equal to the collision dot collider dot get component is then find this enemy health and after finding this we can simply enemy health dot damage give some damage to the over player for this reason I will give P which means we will take two hits to completely destroy this tank and after this you are done double check that your graphics has enemy tank we tank also have enemy then just I'm going to decrease the spawn point intervals by more by two okay let's try to kill this tank well, First bullet and in the second bullet is going to destroy. But after destroying this, actually the enemy tank clone is still there. Okay, it's already destroyed the graphics, so we need to do something. Okay, so we need to destroy the entire game object, not only the. Editing done. Then add the new script. No, sorry, not add the same script to him. And this is going to work now. Then uh, now try this code, and it's going to simply work this, and it's going to destroy the tank completely. So we have no any residues left behind, and everything working fine. Now we add responses to the enemies, give enemy AI, sorry, give enemy health. Now when the enemy die, we didn't actually respawn. So we need to respawn them to make the game continue. So first thing, I'm going to go to spawn manager and give him a tag. So I'm going to add tag, create tag, and give him a tag spawner. Okay, just take the spelling. I will give spawner. Spawner and can save this. Now this add this tag to the spawner to our spawn manager. Then we go into the uh, enemy health script. As we destroy this health, uh, when health becomes zero, we need to tell them tell them the spawn script to our one enemy is going to die, so we need to respawn them. Okay, then then I'm going to first we need to access the script by typing m and Spawn, spawner. Okay, then we're going to access the script. So I'm going to access the script from the beginning of the game. Let the game start. Public start. M spawner is going to be equal to game object. We need to find this object by using find game 
Yeah, we'll give it tag. Then give the tag spawner. Then we're going to find get the component. Get component and the component will be the our spawner script. Like spawner. Okay, we access the script and then we go to the and spawner we going dot we need now we need to find that variable that will spawn the current enemy so we can be not a public so we need to make it public now if you want to current which does not so expect you can add attribute to this is optional but you can add this optional okay hide and expect this is going to uh, hide the this variable in the expect inspector if you will save it and just go to the spawner script and look is auto is still hiding is is public but still hide and as, as we remove this hide inspector back to the if look is display so i leave at it is that's not going to hide it then here i'm going to end spawner dot current enemy going to be minus equal equal one so we're going to just in this one ready then and that's it so now if we play this game the one enemy going to spawn let's destroy him let the second enemy also spawn one two and the second one spawn wait for some time and okay. and either also going to spawn here and the third enemy too so there are two enemies let's destroy them also by right, together okay it's going to and then okay it's going to spawn new enemy and this is going to spawn so we have is also going to spawn new one more enemy so it's spawning the tank infinitely